at exactly half of the McDonald's I go to, the chocolate chip cookies come in three packs, and the other half of the McDonald's I go to, they come in two packs. I don't understand. I'm sure it's a franchisee level decision, but why the fuck is that the only item? Maybe it's not. Maybe there are other items I need to scrub the entire menu and analyze it. Alright, today we're going to be doing a bit of a teardown, but first I'm going to tell you a story. So, the other night I get home from work and I go into the bathroom. This is what it should normally sound like when you flip the switch up and down on the switch that we have throughout this household. So, instead, it was more like this. And this is not how the switch was when I left for work in the morning. So, I said, well, what did you do? And she said, nothing, I was just running the hair dryer. So, this hair dryer was running for over 15 minutes straight. And to understand why this might be a problem, let me draw out for you the schematic of my bathroom. So there's a switch, the switch in question that was being flicked, and it controls the light as well as the outlet, which is a GFCI, but that doesn't necessarily matter in this case, other than that it has to be because it's a bathroom. Motherfucker, GFCI saves lives. They save fucking lives. You don't know why a GFCI saves lives? Watch this video. There's a card right here. Watch this video. So anyway, as it turned out, this hair dryer was pulling however many amps it was pulling through this switch for some amount of time. So I could already feel that the switch is like mostly fucked, but what I can't see is that it's completely covered in burn marks because the lights aren't on because the circuit is blown. So I go downstairs and I reset the circuit breaker and I ask our caller on the phone and I say, honey, is the light on? Are the lights on in there? She says no. And she told me that the switch was hot to the touch, hot to the touch. That's no good. You don't want that fucking in your house. You don't want hot to the touch in your house, in your walls, for no reason. So I replaced the switch with a new one that I had already bought from the Home Depot. And I looked on it and I made sure that it was rated for 15 amps, which is the rating on the breaker, so that it should be able to handle the full current of that circuit. It shouldn't matter that the hair dryer is plugged in through the switch. The switch should be able to handle 15 fucking amps. What if you plug the hair dryer into a different outlet that's controlled by a switch? That would be horrible. Or worse yet, plugging the hair dryer into one of those screw-in adapters that goes into a light socket. That's probably the worst possible fucking idea. Don't do it. Don't do it. So I wanted to take this fucking switch apart for two reasons. First of all, I'm curious why it... I'm curious why a small thermal overload caused it to go from this to what is essentially fucking flaccid city over here. Second of all, I want to know why the circuit breaker tripped. Was there a short circuit within the switch? Or was the hairdryer really pulling so much energy that the circuit blew and the switch just happened to have been fucked up and melted in the process? For all I know, the switch may have welded itself permanently in the on position and the circuit blew independently. Or the contact could have deformed and caused a short circuit to this metal casing. So even though this is a very old ass fucking switch and it does not have a grounding screw or a grounding connection, this metal plate is connected to the metal box which is grounded in this house as it should be. So it is possible that a short developed in the switch and that's what blew the circuit. But either way, I want to find out because, you know, if my wife's going to be using this hair dryer, I want to know what's going on. So we're going to conduct a number of experiments before we take this switch apart. The first experiment I want to conduct is I want to see if the hair dryer, how many amps it's pulling. So first of all, let's read the label here. 1,875 watts. So. So if you remember from grade school, power equals voltage times current. So the voltage here is 110, 115 volts at max. And we know that the power is, what does it say on this fucking thing, 1875? 1875, so if we divide both sides by 110, we get... We get 17 amps, holy shit, let's divide it by 115. 
1875 divided by 115. That's 16 amps. So we know that that's not always the case because then you'd be popping the breaker all the time. But let's find out what the nominal current is. Let's, let's actually measure it. That can't be right. That's not right either. Hold on, what are we doing? This is disappointing. This is disappointing. I'm gonna go plug this into the real outlet and see if it pulls any more amps. All right, I have no idea. The meter shows a fraction of an amp, which can't possibly be correct. Uh, the thing certainly doesn't draw more than 15 because it didn't blow this circuit and there's a lot of other things happening on this circuit. So I don't think we have an issue with the hair dryer. I think we have some premature thermal overload in what was the switch. So the next thing I want to find out is whether or not in whatever position the switch is in, if it actually works, if there's actually continuity through it. Uh, it's very possible the contacts have welded themselves shut or have been damaged and are completely open regardless of the position of this because this feels fucking chintzy. This doesn't feel like it's moving anything. So I'm going to put my meter in continuity mode. Hopefully that works. At least that we can check. Um, I'll put it in beep mode so it makes a beep when we have continuity. So I'm going to put these in here and here and we have no continuity. And we have no continuity even when the switch is on. Which makes sense because even after I reset the circuit breaker, the light did not come on. So the switch is complete toast. The next thing I want to find out is if either of these have shorted to the metal casing. And it doesn't seem like that one has. And it doesn't seem like that one has either. So the meter is working, but nothing seems to be connected here. Well, the metal casing is connected to itself, but that's it. There's definitely marks here that were not there before. It's definitely discolored. I don't know if that's from heat or whatever. So let's see if we can... Yeah, I didn't think that would work. It's actually working. So there's two screws on the face of this fucking thing. Let's zoom in here. Whoa. Whoa. Two screws on the face of this thing here. Should we open this one first to see how it's supposed to look? Oh, this one's riveted shut. I can't fucking open this. I'm not going to destroy this. All right. Well, there goes that idea. So, what we have going on in here is... So, here's the part that normally would go up and down. And this part here would rest on here and move that, that metal wheel up and down and then within here let's pull out this assembly first of all do i have to take any of this okay this comes apart very hopefully all right looks like it was coming apart oh this this piece comes out and this piece oh what is going on here i right, want to remove all this dust that has built up in here because this the switch was sitting like in the wall like this so all of the dust is on the bottom that has collected inside this cavity okay now i should be able to pull this out and now this whole thing on the inside should come out i might need to persuade it a bit oh. come on bitch get the fuck out of there pocket screwdriver don't turn it on take it apart so now I'm going to say that the switch heated up, parts deformed, it lost contact, and that was the end of it. That's all that probably happened. There doesn't seem to be any sign of a short circuit. I've had switches hooked up to short circuits before, and you will see black residue like coming out of the switch. You don't even have to take it apart to know that something happened in there. I don't see any sign of that. Okay, so I'm back and I have absolutely no idea how this light switch works. I watched several teardowns. I, in fact, I've watched all teardowns of all light switches on YouTube, and none of them use this weird technology with this rotating drum. And okay, so let's let's take a look at this scientifically, right? So this thing has two metal caps that are sitting on this. It feels like plaster 
molded insert. And I've already checked, this inside shit is not conductive. The outside caps are conductive, but only when you put a fair amount of pressure on them. So if you take a look here, touching it very lightly, you can see that there's almost 10 ohms of resistance across this, but then when you start pushing on it, it drops all the way down to zero. So I'm not sure if this is some type of compression system. Now the other thing is that between when these are both together, there's an insulating uh, there's an insulating material in between here. It looks like acrylic of some sort, but when you put these on here, there is no continuity between the two sides. Oh, wait, what? Oh, what? Wait, what? Oh, oh. Oh, wait, no, it's because I'm touching it. That's why. Okay, yeah, no, there's absolutely no conductivity whatsoever from one side to the other. So... This is very mysterious. Very mysterious. I'm going to reassemble this and see if I can't figure out how this might possibly work. Nope. Alright, you know what? I'm done with this. If you are an electrician or you know how this switch did work when it did work, write a comment below. If you have a hypothesis as to how this switch might have worked when it worked, write a comment below. If you can find any information on what this kind of switch is even called, write a comment. Okay, so that this video isn't a complete bust, I'm going to demystify how a three-way switch works. A three-way switch is nothing more than a single-pull, double-throw toggle switch. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, a three-way switch looks like this. How does this work? Well, first of all, let me prove out to you that that is the case. There's no magic happening here. There is no IP packets. There is no Ethernet network connecting these switches. There's no home automation server. This is merely good old physics. Bitch. And now we put it on the other terminal, which is on this side. See? So it is just an AB switch. Yeah, I was wondering if I could have my AB switch connected to two VCRs. <laughs> anyway, uh, so how this works is that you have two of these, right? So this is one three-way switch, and this is the other three-way switch, right? So these two connections here are called the traveler terminals. This is where hot wire comes in from the circuit breaker panel and this goes to the load or the light or the appliance or whatever you want to control. And as you can see here, if I change the position of the switch on either side, the load will either go from being connected to not connected or not connected to connected regardless of whether the switch is up, down, whatever. So right now, the, the, it's connected. There's power running through here, and if I were to put, switch this side and put this down, then it's connecting to nothing. Or if I were to put this side down, while well, that side's up, it'd be connecting to nothing. And either way, you can control the light from either side without having to put them in series. And that is how a three-way motherfucking switch works. See, this switch right here is 20 amp. This would be fine with a hair dryer. This fucking piece of shit. We have expended all of the chooch factor on this one. Whoa! Hey, it's like I have a halo. Look at that, I'm a fucking angel. If you like this video, click the like button below. Consider supporting my channel on Patreon. Subscribe if you found this video interesting, useful, or just freaky. And uh, until next time, say and don't do it. Don't do it. Safety first. Stay tuned for Eyewitness News at 12, followed by The Young and the Restless.